Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. This is another edition of our Wasabi Research Club. Today we're talking about Boltzmann, evaluating privacy using entropy metrics. This is uh, work done entirely by uh, Laurent MT. Uh, it's all available on GitHub, and of course we link all of the work that we go through on our Wasabi Research Club uh, GitHub, which is just down below. Um, just to remind ourselves where we are, we did a bunch of coin shuffle plus plus, uh, cash fusion, um, and uh, we uh, talked about principles and privacy, talking about uh, best practices and, and how we go about thinking about uh, designing privacy for anonymity networks. Uh, we talked about CoinJoin, Sudoku last week, and this week we're doing Boltzmann. By the end of this video, hopefully we'll resolve what we will be reading next week. Um, last week we talked about um, the CoinJoin Sudoku paper, which tried to uh, 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 de-anonymize uh, flawed coin joins done by shared coin, which was a blockchain.info implementation, which simply took transactions and then merged them. And the way that uh, uh, the de-anonymization attack happened is that it just tried to find inputs and outputs that uh, matched in terms of the So you can see the top one uh, has a match and the bottom does not. Yeah. Um, oh. uh, One sec, guys. I'm just turning the mic off. Now. Yes, it's good now. Yes, it's good now. Is this better? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so moving right along. Um, so we talked about um, how if two transactions are merged together, then there is some uncertainty about how we could de-anonymize the merged transaction. But if we wanted to de-anonymize the merged transaction, so here on the left we have transactions, on the right we have them merged together as in one transaction, what we really need to do is figure out how to make the inputs and the outputs match in sums, just like this. Um, and we keep trying until we find a valid partition of a transaction. So here we have an example of a valid partition of a transaction where we can break up the original transaction to two smaller transactions. Um, this, is, uh, this is the most important thing that we've talked about now, I think in four separate times. And I'm gonna simplify it, um, which is that if when we talk about how anonymous or how uh, private a transaction is, we can take any particular input and any other input or output doesn't really matter. You can take you know, a handful of inputs, you can take a handful of outputs, you can take any partition you want, and you can ask how likely is it that these partitions, this, these, um, these uh, components are, are related. And the magic formula, which is on the left, written clearly in math terms, on the right, in English terms, it's, it, it's simply given a particular combination you find all of the possible possible valid partitions that include that particular combination, and then you divide by all possible valid combinations. So for example, if you were concerned about a specific transaction and you wanted to ask, is input four and output six, in, to what extent are they related? How likely is it that they're in the same transaction? What you can do is you can find all the partitions where I4 and O6 are a part of that, and that could be the number 12, there could be 12 of those in total, and you divide it by the total number of possible valid combinations of any kind, which could be hypothetically 267, and then you get yourself a number like 4.49%. You can do this for any input against any output or anything of that nature. Uh, and, and two big things we talked about, subset sum is the ability to do exactly what we just talked about, finding inputs and outputs that match in uh, the size. And the bell number is uh, the number of possible ways uh, a set can be partitioned. And we know that the bell number grows very quickly and the subset pr sum problem is computationally very difficult for large numbers. So today we're talking about something different, which I'll admit is a, a very philosophically interesting topic. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's very abstract and 
uh, way to think about things, but it's, it's the concept of entropy. So uh, a cur cursory look for the definition, we get a, a few different ways that we use this word. It, We'll see the exact way we're interested in the word for the purposes of, of coin joints. But uh, one example, for example, thermodynamics, which is the likely thing you've heard, is that uh, the quantitative measure of the amount of thermal energy not available to do work, which is kind of uh, uh, interesting, um, kind of an abstract thing to say. Uh, another thing you might have heard as well is the measure of disorder or randomness in a closed system. Um, and another thing you might have heard is, and this is actually the one that's... In, and somewhat more important is the measure of loss information in a transmitted message. But we're actually concerned about something a bit different than exactly that, but, but similar enough that entropy is uh, valuable. So um, one way we look at entropy is we can, you know, I, I was thinking a lot about visualization of entropy. There are many good ways to think about entropy. Um, but on, on the right, we have a solid where all the atoms are very close together. And on the left, we have a gas, and in, in, in the middle, we have a liquid. As you see here, um, the uh, atoms are spread out and more, uh, I guess you could say, random. And so we would say that on the right, we have uh, low entropy, and on the left, we have high entropy. Um, but uh, maybe a better way of, of, of saying this, this is what my, my father told me, and he's a, he's a physicist. He said that, it's imagine your own bedroom and uh, a state of low entropy is one where all everything in your room is very neat and clean and organized all the shirts are together all the pants are together all the pillows are together everything is very very partitioned and naturally as as you live in your room and if you don't do the work to to maintain this this cleanliness then things tend to just sort of spread out go all over the place you have a book on your bed you have a sock in your in your, your the bathroom all sorts of, of of mess and that's what we call high entropy um, and there are some uh, s some interesting uh, uh, laws. Uh, th th these aren't exactly the laws of thermodynamics because they don't matter for our sake, but there are two things to consider. The first to consider is this the principle of conservation of energy, which for us matters because we deal with, with conservation of energy in, in, in Bitcoin, namely that Bitcoin is always conserved in a transaction. And the second is that uh, the, the state of a closed system is that it tends towards a higher entropy. A good way of imagining this is that if you take a bottle of cologne and you spray it in, 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 a, in a closed room, as, as time goes on, the cologne is not going to exist in one place. The, the particles, the molecules of the cologne are going to go throughout the entire room as opposed to concentrate in one area where they started uh, in the bottle of cologne. Um, so as I said before, with Bitcoin energy is conserved, the left hand and the right hand must always match. So when we have a change of state, in, in a, which is a transaction, transactions change the state of Bitcoin ownership from one person to the other, uh, we know that coins are always conserved. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool remark. And, uh, and now we're talking about something uh, very different, but, but, but very interesting, um, which is Shannon entropy. So Shannon entropy has to do with information theory um, and much less to do with physics. And the concept of Shannon entropy um, it, and it shares intuition with Boltzmann is that uh, uh, is that <clears throat> it's <clears throat> thinking about how to explain this. Um, well, okay, so suppose you need to uncover a certain English word of five letters. You manage to obtain one letter, for example, the letter E. Um, this is useful information, but the letter E is common in English. So this provides little information. If, on the other hand, the letter that you discovered is J, the least common um, letter in English, the search has been more narrowed and you obtained more information. Um, I think a good way, uh, I, I watched an excellent 20-minute uh, presentation specifically on Shannon Entropy, and I think a good way to condense it is it, it, um, it, it's, it's the, number of the, uh, the number of questions you would have to ask, um, binary questions you would have to ask, to get to the information that uh, that you want to know, but is currently unknown. Um, so it, 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 it's also a bit abstract, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, so we define the Shannon entropy of of a, a, a piece of information A as the sum of probabilities um, uh, of all the different possible states. 
it, it's lucky for us that in uh, when, when we're talking about coin joins, we don't value one type of coin join over the other. We don't value one partition as being more likely as another. Therefore, we don't need to work with those probabilities. But this is the technical definition of Shannon entropy. And um, and so for for the case of what uh, Laurent brought up is he's going to define uh, entropy as um, uh, as the uh, uh, as log two of the number of possible ways you can uh, partition a transaction. So the question you might ask is, why is it log two? Why is it, for example, not the natural logarithm, which is uh, which is, is almost log two, but it's not quite? Um, why is it not log ten? Um, well, it turns out it's log two because in information theory, we're conf we, we, we're concerned with information being um, represented as bits. So it makes sense that when we when we say something has a Shannon entropy of two, what we're really saying is that if you could ask two binary questions and get valid answers, you would know the original information. So the, 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 the information is distorted uh, in such a way where you have to ask two binary questions. That's what the, the, the number, the entropy number of two would be. And, and likewise, the number of three would, would be uh, that you have to ask three sequential questions, uh, uh, binary questions in a row. To, to get the uh, valid original information. Laurent gives some examples. So in this case, he gives an example with uh, six, uh, five inputs and one output. And because there are no ways to consider this transaction apart from all of the funds moving to O2, um, um, there's only one uh, possible case. So the entropy is zero. In other words, we wouldn't have to ask any binary questions because it's already a deterministic link. So it would be easy for anyone to know uh, who gave money to O2 um, and, and what, what, what happened here. Here's an example where it's a little bit less clear. So, um, so now there are two possible interpretations of these transactions. What are the two possible interpretations? Well, here's the first one. Maybe uh, Yellow gave uh, money to himself and then uh, Green gave money to herself. Um, or it's one individual and they gave money to themselves. Um, those are the two possible cases, and so um, we have an entropy value of one. And lastly, we have uh, example number three, where we have two inputs, four outputs. Here's the first case. Here's the second case. Because the values are the same, it's like a coin join. We can see that you can replace those two values. And then, of course, we have the obvious case, um, uh, where it's all in one individual. Uh, because we have three cases, we have an entropy of 1.585 uh, because there are three cases. Um, okay, so Laurent then proceeds to define a few terms which are interesting. Uh, intrinsic entropy being the value computed without any additional information. Uh, no additional information. So consider the transaction outside of the blockchain. Um, so uh, th this is what his um, his script was doing when it was just taking one transaction at a time and, and calculating it. The actual entropy is the value computed considering additional information on the blockchain. So you know, wh wh was there any address reuse? Was uh, d did the output then get merged with another output? Um, that's revealing common ownership. Uh, and then there's max entropy, which is kind of an interesting uh, one as well. The value associated with a perfect transaction, a coin join with equal outputs and inputs that is similar to the original transaction. And he calls these this type of transaction tuples, I believe, um, although I'm not 100% sure. Um, and so from there, he's, he, he says that wallet efficiency is the intrinsic entropy minus the max entropy expressed in bits. And the blockchain efficiency is the actual entropy minus the max entropy. And I guess the reason why he says this is because the wallets cannot really know what the actual entropy is because wallets are not blockchain analysis uh, companies. Uh, they don't have uh, very sophisticated tools on hand. So the wallet efficiency is purely looking at the intrinsic versus the max, and the blockchain efficiency is actual versus max. Um, so his own results in 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 in, uh, in doing this was uh, he investigated 97 million transactions, computed entropy uh, for 98.59 percent of them, and was not able to process 1.41 percent. And the reason why is pretty uh, obvious because everything we've talked about in the in the in the past few weeks with the coin joint Sudoku about having to uh, find all of the partitions of a 
uh, of a coin join, it becomes a very expensive task when you talk about many inputs and many outputs. So it's, it's just not practical for, for many, many transactions. Um, so uh, of, of the transactions he did process, 85.47 had a null entropy, which means that there was no question about uh, the inputs and outputs being linked. 14.52 had an entropy of greater than one, so they were ambiguous transactions. And 1.89% had an entropy of greater than 1.585, as good or better than a coin join. So, yeah, um, yeah, I think I think we'll we'll probably leave it there for now, and uh, open it up. Thank you, Aviv. After your presentation, I got more confused of least important <laughs> questions, but uh, let let's uh, let's try to. Let's try to figure that out uh, because I'm not sure we looked at the exact same source. Uh, I was looking at the gists. What did you look at? Yes, uh, all, all, all the gists. Yes. Mm, all, all right. So yeah, I, I'm, I was mainly concerned of, of the first one. The, the last two, I, I just just went through, but I guess the transaction. The, the actual data is in the last two, isn't it? What you cited here. No, I think uh, I was mostly focused on the first one as well. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but everything I just talked about was the first one. Okay, so the very first thing about the first one is that uh, it, so the, the number N, you know, the number of valid submappings, uh, you here in your presentation added it to the uh, added uh, the full mapping right when when it's only one person transferring money to himself uh, but he actually did not add it to the calculation of n um, is that is that what you remember exactly okay uh, what, what, one more time so so the transaction itself when it's just one person it is uh, it, it he did not add it to the calculation of the n you know the number of valid submappings oh oh he absolutely did uh okay i i mean even Adam Gibson noted it under the gist that that should be added. Anyway, it's, it's a not important question. I think it's a, it's a, it's better to add to, because that's definitely a possibility. Anyway, and another thing is that I I was immediately assuming that it it was Shannon entropy too, uh, but then I noted it under the gist under a comment and he did not seem to know what I was talking about. Why am I talking about Shannon and why am I calling it Shannon Entropy? And I was like, ah, oh, okay, I, I just misremembered. I, I didn't know why I was assuming that. But now in your presentation, you actually went through it that, hey, this is actually the Shannon Entropy. Uh, do you know, is this the Shannon entropy, or, or or do you know what where my confusion is coming from here? Yes. So it would not make sense for it to be any other kind of entropy other than Shannon entropy. Hmm. So the the problem is that entropy is used for very different uh, things in, in in science, and. Um, Shannon entropy is concerned with information theory, and that's what we're concerned with as well. So, um, you know, if it was really Boltzmann, would we use uh, the Boltzmann constant? Because he didn't use Boltzmann's constant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, that's that's an interesting question. Would be nice if the author would be here and could answer to that. Anyway, uh, I, I I think these are the least important uh, questions here. Uh, do you guys have have anything, or or should I go forward? Okay. Go ahead. Then, Adam Gibson, 
I have my own opinion on, on this, what I'm going to ask you guys, but Adam Gibson was critiquing it that, um, well, what about pay to endpoint transactions and what about all the different kind of interpretations of all the transactions? It does not seem to factor them in. Um, did you guys read that conversation and what do you think about that? So I, I did read the conversation and I think that um, uh, it's, 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 it's not part of the scope of what this, um, what this uh, paper is trying to achieve. So I, 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 I don't think it's important. Um, so for example, if, if we knew that 1% of the transactions were pay joins, then we would have to add that as a caveat that we have this tool over here, but then 1% of the time, you have to use a completely different tool to understand what's going on. Um, so I, I don't think it changes very, very much. Anyone else on this? Yes. Um, I think that you need to assume something when you analyze a transaction. Otherwise, uh, there are no way to, to get any conclusion. For example, if you say, okay, there is an heuristic that says that the inputs belong to the same uh, owner, the same wallet, yes? I, I could say, no, that's not necessarily true. So that doesn't mean you have to discard or reject the heuristic. The heuristic is, a sti is still valid because most of the times the inputs belong to the same guy, right? Even when could be the opposite sometimes. So you need to assume something, right? Otherwise, the uh, uh, transaction can have uh, lots and lots and lots of interpretation. Even the most uh, simple uh, and obvious transaction could have a lot of uh, interpretations. Yeah, and that's exactly why I don't actually understand how any blockchain analysis is like valid, considered valid. Actually, I I have an even stronger opinion in defense of this uh, research because, as far as I understand, it just doesn't matter because this research wants to break down big transactions into small individual transaction parts and all the heuristics, all the different kind of interpretations can come only after the parts, the, the specific submappings. So you can only apply them to the submappings. You cannot apply any interpretation cross heuristics, even with pay to endpoint when the receiver participates in the coin join itself that would be that would still give a valid input and output sub mappings like a subset sum right like like the same sum on the input side with the receiver and the sender contributing to the same uh, contributing with different inputs but that still gives the exact same subset on the output amount. So I believe uh, heuristics uh, and different interpretations of the transactions just not only is not efficient to, to be part of this research, but it just doesn't need to be because the subsets are just independent concepts from that. Uh, do, do you guys agree or or am I mistaken here? L L Lucas said it right. Uh, you just you, you have some assumptions and this works perfectly if you just assume a few things. Um, pay join is outside of, of the scope. So you just say that you're concerned with only things that meet those assumptions. Yeah, but my point was even if you assume pay join, the the subset sums, the, the valid submappings don't wouldn't change with that assumption. You wouldn't be able to incorporate that assumption because it's instead of 
the sender merges two coins, it's the sender and the receiver merges together two coins in the same subset sum. And, you know, it's it these these heuristics, these interpretations don't happen cross sub mappings. So I, I, I at least I cannot come up with any such example where when these interpretations c could mess with this scheme itself. That's my point here. I think I understand what you mean. And yeah, I would agree. <laughs> could you explain it? Because I, I it's, it's obvious that I'm not explaining it well. <laughs> no, I, I barely understand what you mean. So I don't think I can do any better job. All right. So. <laughs> Let's let's move on to. Time. I mean, I mean, uh, are you? Do you mean like the 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 amounts of outputs? And uh, I mean, it's some way like clear from that uh, with uh, such a little amount of uh, inputs and outputs uh, that I, I don't know. It's like. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I probably can't explain it any better than you did. Oh, for example, this I, you and me participating in a pay to endpoint transaction. I put in one Bitcoin, you put in two Bitcoin and three Bitcoin comes out to you. Now, if we put this pay to endpoint transaction into a coin join itself, that that does not that that's still of all its sub mappings the one bitcoin input the two bitcoin input and the three bitcoin output that's a completely valid sub mappings what boltzmann is looking for so it won't be like like i put in one bitcoin input you put in two bitcoin input and somehow you only get back two bitcoin output unless I get back one Bitcoin output, right? So the, the, the input sums and the output sums of every submapping has to add up to the same amount. And, and that's, that's why I, I don't think this is important. Anyway, next. I, I, I understand what you're saying now. You're saying that you could still use Boltzmann to parse all of the pay joins that are separate in, in, in the coin join, and you can figure that out later, uh, is, if, if, if that's what you, you mean to say. Yes, like exactly, it's, it's, exactly. Okay, yeah, I agree. And now I have two topics left. Oh, one is, the, is a nice one. Uh, you know, oh, let, me, let me read. But as illustrated by CoinJoin Sudoku attack, this metric fails to detect privacy leaks occurring at the lo lower level of specific inputs and outputs. And we just talked about CoinJoin Sudoku last time, and it's it's interesting that you know it's it's claimed, but the research was never released. <laughs> So anyway, this this is the classic example, and I was saying that uh, this this was actually uh, cited by so many places, and no one really looked into it that much. Anyway, uh, w uh, the other thing is Napsack. We 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 always keep coming back to Napsack, and I think this might be the very best time to come back to Napsack here, because. <clears throat> If you look at the entropy here, is the log two n that only depends on the number of valid submappings, right? Nothing else. N is the number of valid submappings, and the log two is is, is 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 there. So so this is what only depends on. But we can improve upon it a lot because Napsack actually gave us a mathematical model on on what as to look at. Uh, Napsack not on, only looks at the number of total valid submappings, but the input-input links, input-output links, output and the output-output links. Links means like probability of links, 
right? And you talked about this, uh, this Aviv, and and the, the, this is this is the final picture here, right? Like like uh, you have to incorporate the these links between each other. Oh my God, the baby is crying because I'm talking too loud. <laughs> so. Uh, let me say it quickly. <coughs> so you have to incorporate these links into your entropy calculation and you get a much more accurate entropy metric with, with, with uh, incorporating the knowledge in NAPSAC. That's my point. I, I have a question that uh, I think Lucas might... Uh, no, but I, I'm still confused as to uh, why using log two makes things valuable for us. Like, uh, like, w w w yeah, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not seeing the utility of of this of this of this uh, approach. I mean, it's the same as we talked about before. It's it, it's exactly the theory that I have in the slide right here. What's, you know, what's the big, big how are we going to make use of the fact that we're applying log two to, to the... Uh, no, because the number of combinations that you have is two X, I, I don't know how to say this, is two um, to the N exponential, you know, two N. <laughs> So okay. if, if if you have the number of combinations, you apply the log of the log two of n, and then you get the 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 this number that gives you how many bits of entropy you you have in that transaction. I have a more intuitive way of approaching it, uh, or, or, or do you, are you satisfied with Lucas's answer? Well, I'm just trying to think to, to my head how I'm going to use log two in terms of um, in terms of making statement. So, are, are you? I have an entropy of three and an entropy of four because there were nine partitions in one and. Uh, and um, well, I, th I think I'm not doing the calculation. But anyways, the point is, if I have a if I have an entropy of let's say two and four, does that mean it's twice as private? Is that, is that the idea here? So it's I don't know why lock two, but I I have a good feeling about the logarithm part of the the log for sure because if you think about it that. You have five inputs and five outputs, and let's say you get ten combinations. And if you have ten inputs and ten outputs, then you you don't get twenty combinations, but you get something like one hundred or, or 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 something like exponential number of combinations. And but ultimately. The links between the inputs and the outputs and input inputs output outputs are are not that so so there is only ten inputs and ten outputs so that there cannot be so it, the number of combinations may be exponential but you don't gain that much more privacy just because the number of combinations exponential so let's throw a logarithm at it. And actually that's what I thought, how, how the Shannon entropy came to light to that, uh, you know, it just, just, oh, let's throw a logarithm because it, it seems right. I, I, I thought it was an intuitive thing, but now I, I don't know. But anyway, the, the logarithm is very intuitive here because here with this you can compare uh, two transactions more accurately of course, it's just an estimation, but but more accurately. Does that make sense? Um, not exactly. I mean, uh, you know, you could also divide by ten, right? Uh, um, 
I, I understand that you're saying that the number of partitions grows exponentially, but uh, you have to convince me why the privacy doesn't grow exponentially. Um, what you're saying right now is the privacy is growing linearly as your your subsets are growing exponentially. Yes, not exactly linearly, but more like linearly, yes, because the number of participants aren't growing exponentially. So it's it's not fair to say that, that well, it, it had 10 participants in this transaction and, and, and so your anonymity grew exponentially, right? Mm, but the efforts that you need to denimize, they, they grow exponentially. I mean, uh, amount of computer power you need to, to spend to denimize. So if we look at this, so maybe it grows exponentially too. Yeah, that's true. I would say that's another question here because here the assumption is that it can be de-anonymized no matter what is the number. It it can be de-anonymized. That's why Boltzmann cannot be computed to to larger coin joins. So 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 we are operating under the working assumption that everything can be de-anonymized in no time and there is no computational complexity involved here. I would love to explain more this to you guys, but the baby is crying and it's because I'm too loud, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we get more questions? Does anyone else have a question they want to ask? Uh, can you change the slides? Uh, I don't know which one was it. I had a question about it. A little bit more to the... Yeah, this one. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about these results? Yeah, sure. So uh, Laurent took uh, roughly 100 million transactions and tried to use, uh, um, tried to use, uh, tried to break them down, subset some, uh, do the uh, figure out all the partitions, and then compute the entropies. Right. So find n for every transaction. And of course, most of the transactions, it's, it's easy to do this. Um, so that was the case for 98.59% of transactions. And some transactions, it was, it was too time consuming. And so of the ones that were computed, um, uh, a majority had null entropy, which means uh, there was no other subset apart from just the transaction itself. Um, fourteen point five two percent. So, is there any specific thing you wanted to ask about? Uh, no, exactly. The uh, what is these the the last two things exactly? Uh, so, fourteen point five two percent had an entropy of equal to or greater than one. So that means that the transaction had two uh, possible interpretations. Um, okay. Because log two of two is one. Right, and then 1.89% had an entropy of greater than 1.58, so at least three interpretations or more. Mm, okay, yeah, I got it now. Thanks. So we would say that 85.47% times 98.59% is the total number of transactions, which is a very large number. It's likely about 80% of transactions that were uh, that were in the pool had zero protection, completely deterministic. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that explained by questions. So, I, you know, when I was thinking about like the whole meaning of this entropy thing, 
I, I guess I kind of get it. If you have a, a, a value of your entropy of one, that means that you have to ask one binary question in terms of figuring out the correct mapping. And if you have an entropy value of two, it means you have to ask two binary questions. Um, uh, and, and so forth. If you have three, then you have to ask three binary questions. Um, and I guess this, this does make sense with transactions that really do involve only one person um, or, or two people, but I, I'm not sure how it would apply at scale. Um, so, so for example, I, I, I don't see the benefit of, of, of applying it to a Wasabi coin join. Uh, I'm not sure I, I'm, I, see, I see the benefit. I think the anonymity set is a much clearer uh, heuristic. Hey guys, it's Nopar 73 ASMR edition. <laughs> I think okay. it would make sense to apply it to the Wasabi transactions, but you can't because it's computationally infeasible but it would be really interesting to see what are the results there <laughs> yeah i agree uh, yes <laughs> yes wait but, um i mean um the entropy yes uh, there there is this um entropy of the transaction right and there and then there is this um level of linkability let's say that you show us uh, that is is interesting too but also in the second part of this GIST collection there is a matrix of I don't remember the name but it's a, a matrix of let me let me find it. I'm a link probability matrix of a transaction that if I understand, I, I didn't read it carefully, yes, but I think it is a matrix that for each input and each output calculates or contains the, the probability of uh, a link between the, that input and that output. Uh, I can be wrong because, again, I, I didn't read it yet, but it it it, it could be makes <laughs> sense to me. Um, so, I think it is a um, uh, it is a good a good tool to to apply against. Uh, well, I think this is what. Um, the, the 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 team this team is um, already uh, done okay I mean I if I can be wrong but it would be interesting to to run in fact we can we can select one of the smaller was of transactions and and see if it, it is possible to to run this this tool I think the link probability matrix should be a three dimensional matrix because you need the input input links the input output links and output output links as the knapsack paper says it. Oh yes, that could be <laughs> really good. But in, in, uh, <sighs> computationally, I think that's extremely expensive. No, it, it is it isn't expense it isn't more expensive at all because Boltzmann relies on identifying the subtransactions and the links 
between input inputs, input outputs and output outputs are calculated by looking at which subtransactions that links are in and divided by the total subtransactions. So the computational work here is identifying the subtransactions or the submappings, uh, same thing, and it's not calculating the links, that is the first thing here. <coughs> Yes, I got it. Uh. All right, guys. Do you want to move on to the next week's topics? Yeah, sure. sure. By the way, you don't have to be in ASMR mode too. You can shout. What paper would you like to to look into next week? Okay, so if you don't give ideas, then I'm going to say a few papers and just shout which one would you like. <coughs> so... Okay. I have these written for me. Researchers in Entropy Wonderland, a review of the entropy concept. Next, <coughs> paper. A cryptoeconomic traffic analysis on the Bitcoin's Lightning Network. Next, paper. Why coin join, as used in the dark coin, does not bring full anonymity. I think this would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Next, heuristics on Bitcoin privacy Wikipedia page. Next, papers from a blockchain analysis company. Uh, it's it's not a paper. It's it just whatever which is. Next, topological analysis of the Lightning Network. Next, why I'm not an entropist. I think this would be very similar to the Anonymity Loves Company a paper. Maybe a little bit more technical, but, but similar philosophical one. Uh, I have no idea, but it, it, that one sounds interesting, interesting to me too. I agree. I agree. Okay. Did I sense that everyone agreed on that? Who did not agree on that? I, I vote for that too. I think that's really interesting. All right. I guess that settles it. Next week, we are going to peer review the paper why I'm not an anthropist. So, okay. Thank you guys for the <laughs> for the spirit review <laughs> and for your patience for listening to me in ASMR mode. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, you bye. know, uh, bye. there is a story about someone who calls um, by phone and a boy, a little boy, say, hey, hi. That's how the, 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 the caller said, hey, boy, is your mom? No, she's not. She's busy. Okay, and your dad? He's not available. He's busy. And what are they doing? They are looking for me. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped the recording right here.